Hi, AJ. My son passed over on the 4th of January of this year. Yep. Um, what was his age, do you mind? He'd just turned 21. 21? In his sleep, um, they had to do an autopsy because there's no idea why he died. He just sort of passed without any... Uh, Peacefully. Yeah. Um, and without any seeming, like, problem? No, no problems. Very yeah. healthy. He was um, slightly intellectually handicapped, yeah. uh, disabled. Um, loving person. That's why I'm confused about the soul condition. Yeah. Well, firstly, you're looking at death as a problem, whereas I don't look at it as a problem. Uh, there are many beautiful experiences that happen uh, during the process of passing. I'll, I'll suggest to you, your son being partially handicapped would have probably would probably much prefer his life in the spirit world than he would prefer it on earth. And I've had that channel too. Yeah. Too. And and as a result of that. Um, events happen through his desire. So his soul condition, remember part of his soul condition is his emotions mm -hmm. and, and desires. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and what I feel happened to him was that he did not come back to his body when the body awoke. So what happens uh, in that case is if your body attempts to awake and you don't come back to it during the process of awaking, you will automatically pass. Do you follow me? And, and this, uh, there is actually allusions to it in the pageant messages, for those of you who have read the pageant messages. Remember that um, uh, Helen said to Ned, said to Mr. Paget, um, that she was afraid that she'd keep him in the spirit world too long and then he wouldn't be able to get back into his body. So I feel that's what happened to your son, actually. He overstayed his spirit. Uh, he did it by mistake, but... He was enjoying himself, yeah. and there was a, his physical body woke up, yeah. and, and he wasn't connected to it, and the cord snaps under those right. conditions. Yeah. yeah, I was confused, because he was very happy with his life. Here. Yeah, I no. feel and from him that it was a mistake, sort of like, a, like he didn't know that he had to come back then. Right. Um, right. There was a draw from his body, but because he was enjoying himself so much, mm. Um, mm. He, he just didn't respond to the draw of his mm. body. Almost everybody responds to the draw of their body as they're waking instantaneously, uh, but your son didn't. Right. Possibly because of the handicap, actually. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Okay, thank yep. you. Does that make sense? He's enjoying himself, eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, he doesn't want to come back here. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Mum, but that's the way it goes. <laughs> yeah, and... Um, and this is the thing, we, we look upon death as a problem. We, we think of, when I say soul condition creating our death, we think, oh, that must mean I had a terrible soul condition to pass when I was 21. No, it doesn't. It can mean totally different things. There are many children who pass who obviously don't have terrible soul conditions, but they do pass because of a law of attraction. Does that make sense? Do you want to use the mic some more? I have been in a bit of turmoil because of a DVD I watched of yours that um, said that the parents' um, soul condition or, or the parents' emotional condition could actually... That is very true. Yeah. Yep. So, and, and, but you also say that you, don't, you should not carry that blame with you. You have to look at your... Just look at your soul. So what is it triggered or brought up for you? And it's triggering some of your emotions about death itself and it's triggering some of your emotions about his life on earth and what it would have been like compared to what it could have been like if he was clear intellectually. It brought up some... I, there's some issues of blame that you actually have about his dis disability, self-blame? No, not... not uh, it wasn't a question. <laughs> <laughs> when I think of the emotional condition I was in when I conceived him, yes. Yes. And, mm. and all you need to do is go into those emotions. Yeah, just let yourself feel a bit. That's where a fair bit of your grief is, actually. Yes. And he, he, he's fine. Like, you, you don't need to worry about him at all. He's more worried about you than you need to worry about him, <laughs> actually. Um, so, yeah. yeah you know. and, and can I also say, I've had a number of dreams that have been very uh, vivid yep. at where I've been with him. And, um, yeah, see, I wouldn't call those dreams. I'd call those sleep state experiences. Right. Where, and this is one thing that most people don't realise on earth too, is that every time you go to sleep at night, you spend time with people in the spirit world. Now, obviously, because of your love for your son, you're going to spend quite a lot of time with him mm. in your mm. sleep state. Mm. I've actually asked him before going to sleep, and it's when I'm at awesome. my lowest that he seems to come to me in that 
yeah. actually the next day I can see a He's huge improvement. Yeah. Yeah. It, it would help him a lot if you can let yourself feel your grief completely. Yes. Because at yes, the moment yeah. he feels it as a pull back to mm. you all the time. Yeah, like, and I'm feeling that. I don't want to, to create that. Yeah. yeah. But, like it, to, but if the, I do need to release. Yeah, it's not the head stuff. Yeah. You need to just... <laughs> Yeah. It's, it's the grief he's trying to make better for mum. Mm. And so if you can just release that grief and realise that he's, he's all fine and you get to spend plenty of time with him in the sleep state mm. and later you will remember it all mm. um, as, you, as you progress anyway, you'll remember it all. Mm. So you won't have to worry so much about, about the fact of his passing. So, yeah. Thank you. Let Thank yourself you so much. release some of those things. Yeah.